Dr. Sam. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet as we come to you from Washington, D.C. on a week-to-week -week basis as we're looking around the globe for those thousand best practices, technology, services, products, and of course the leaders are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. As we go to a planet of nine billion people, how we're going to be able to provide the food, the fuel, the fiber, all the basic infrastructure that's needed and particularly the education for the next generations that are coming as we move towards that nine billion person goal on the planet. Sitting right beside me, someone who's very actively involved in all this, this is uh, Megan Penn. She's a director of global education, United Nations Association of the National Capital Area in Washington, D.C. And Megan, welcome to the Emerald Planet. Thank you very much for having me today. Glad to have you here. Tell us a little bit about your role as director of global education. Of course. That is quite a title you yes. have. <laughs> My primary focus is the development and implementation of a program called Global Classrooms DC. So this includes new program development, engaging new youth, students and schools, as well as organizing our annual model UN conferences at the U.S. Department of State and the Pan American Health Organization. Mm -hmm. Now looking at this Global Classrooms DC, tell us a little bit about the, the mission, the vision of that, and then the number of schools that you're reaching out to within the area. Of course. Global Classrooms DC is the flagship education program of the United Nations Association of the National Capital Area. And it's actually part of a worldwide initiative under the, the United Nations Association of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. um, its primary goal is to engage and educate students about issues that are happening, international issues that are happening around the world, as well as locally, and how the United Nations discusses and finds solutions to these complex issues. Currently, we were, uh, last year we worked with over 3,000 students in mm -hmm. D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, and we actually had a delegation from Ghana join us. Um, and this year we are currently over 1,000 students. That's incredible. Now looking at the aspect that you're in Washington, D.C., which is really important. So how does that add to and augment what you're doing? You had this group that came in from Ghana. Do you have uh, any other international groups that join in from time to time? And how does it really being in Washington, D.C. really change the dynamic of what you're doing as far as the the national capital region. D.C. is a very politically charged area, as we all know, and so being being located in Washington, D.C. is a huge benefit for our program as our students, as they are able not only to learn about the international issues from the United Nations perspective and different countries' perspective, but also have a first hand, uh, be a first hand audience to how the politicians and the U.S. Department of State and the White House is discussing and addressing these issues. And looking at the age population that you serve, uh, private, public schools, charter schools, give us a little bit of the mix of that. And then how did the students actually find out about this program? So we work with students from all education backgrounds. Um, what initially started, Global Classrooms initially started to, f to help public school students mm -hmm. get involved in programs like Model UN, um, which is typically prior to 2000 was not something that they had access to. Um, now, Global Classrooms DC works with students from public schools, private schools, homeschooled co-ops, um, different after school programs, and including some international schools. The primary of our students are still involved in DC, Maryland, and Virginia, um, but that, ex that is increasingly expanding and we're finding more and more students from around the United States and around the globe are wanting to be involved in Global Classrooms DC and participate in these number of programs. We work with students from grades 5 through 12, um, so we've got quite an age group to be working with, which makes it very interesting to see how the students in our, the younger students we work with, how they view issues and they find solutions through Model UN compared to some of our high school audience and how they uh, approach the issues and research the issues and think about them. I've been a speaker several times, uh, actually up in uh, New York, as far mm -hmm. as the uh, National Model uh, UN is concerned. What are some of the issues that uh, the students are faced with and how do you organize because I think you organize around issues and also by country and so they have a chance to look at a particular issue and uh, to actually represent that particular country that they are either they select or they're assigned to tell us a little bit about that organization and how does that really involve them and make them even more engaged as far as the process as they go throughout the year 
We work with about four to six topics every single year. Um, and there are a wide range of issues covering anything from the environment to human rights, soft and hard political security issues. Um, they change every single year. And, we try, and that happens because we try to keep them as current and relevant to not only what's being discussed in the United Nations, but also the problems that are being faced by the international community at large. This year, our students are discussing and learning about seven different issues, not all at once of mm -hmm. course um, and they're able to select and choose what issues fit within their personal um, their personal aspirations um, when learning about them but they've learned about the United Nations global goals they've learned about access to vaccines this ongoing situation in Syria which is incredibly important and hitting all of the headlines right now um, as well as fair trade sustainable su supply chains climate change world heritage site conservation and nuclear nonproliferation so we cover a lot large range of interest areas, which makes it great for the students. And like I said, they change every single year. Um, so last year we looked at some women's rights issues and we also looked at corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. And some of these issues, as you know, they change year to year. And so every once in a while we do repeat some issues. For example, the situation in Syria was one of the issues our students learned about about three or four years ago. But the situation in Syria is very different today than it was at that time period. So even though we're repeating topics students are still learning and being able to critically think about that issue in a completely new way. And the whole thing about the environment too, that's constantly evolving exactly. and changing. COP21 in Paris, France and the World Climate Change Conference and yes. all those kinds of things. Uh, looking at the model United Nations, this is something that's very prestigious. Mm -hmm. uh, youth all over the planet, you know, really uh, compete in many countries to be able to get into this. Tell us a little bit about the origin of that, uh, what it actually does beyond the topics and the countries that are going to be represented, but what's kind of the nuts and bolts for the youth to become involved? in that and then how do you engage the parents and the community in that whole process? So Model United Nations, you're representing, you're simulating the United Nations. So you're representing and students when they attend our conference and many other conferences, they get assigned a country in a particular committee or topic. And so if you're discussing the situation in Syria, for example, they're discussing and they're representing a current nation, a country, and the policies that that country has towards that particular topic, um, which also helps in them being able to gain a lot of insight into different countries and how different countries view different issues. Yeah, because it could be like one uh, group would be representing uh, Russia as exactly. an example, yeah. Saudi Arabia, could be even Iran. So it doesn't matter what the politics is as far as the UN or with the nation states, as the fact is these are actors that are very much involved mm -hmm. in that and then that translates into the studies they have to do. What's some of the feelings about that is that, you know, they have some of these uh, states that say, I I don't really want to represent that country and others will say you know I want to have this and you're saying this is how you really grow you learn and uh, you learn how to express yourself even may be a view that you don't take personally but this is something that you need to learn and it helps them to be future better diplomats. Definitely, it definitely does. Um, some of, I did model United Nations myself and some of my favorite countries to represent were the ones that I didn't exactly agree with their politics or their policies on different issues. And I think that stepping outside that comfort zone and representing countries and having to defend opinions that you may not personally uh, agree with really helps not only to create the other argument and strengthen your own argument once you're kind of putting your own hat on and you don't have your diplomatic hat on. Um, but it also really helps to just create a active and very engaged global citizen and helps all of these students and anybody to participate in it to even if they don't agree with the issue, they're able to understand maybe where some of these countries are coming from. Um, and so they're able to empathize or sympathize with some of these issues when they are happening or as they evolve. and why these countries think the way they do, even if you do not agree with it. Well, you know, the whole thing about it, Megan, too, though, is that, you know, many times, uh, you know, as the adults, we think we have all the answers, we know all the truth that's going on around the globe, and having these youth that actually taking the, the stance and perspectives of societies that we don't necessarily agree with, all of a sudden they may be introducing new ideas, new information that actually the adults say, 
well, we never thought about that. Mm -hmm. And it's something we really need to think about. So how does that work into so that this information, it doesn't just stay within the Model UN, is there some way that this is actually shared beyond that community? I think it's shared a lot with the skills that the students are learning by participating in Model UN. You don't come away from a conference just being an expert on whatever issue you've represented. Um, all of these issues are interconnected with each other. Climate change isn't just a climate issue. It can be a global health issue. It can be a trade issue. And so the knowledge that's gained from the conferences and the research that the students do to prepare spills over into all these other aspects of their life, not only at a topical issue, but also within a skill set. You learn a number and strengthen a number of skills by participating in Model UN, from reading, writing, researching, critical thinking, negotiation, which can not only help you for college to be better prepared for college, but also the professional workforce, and really helps to you to be remained an active citizen in the global community as well as in your local community. Well, one of the things, too, is networking is really a key yes. issue. I've talked with a number of parents, both when I was a speaker up in uh, Newark, and then uh, actually just getting ready for this program today. It's, it's about skill sets and all that, but networking really is the, the real meat, the essence of all this. And you've had a personal experience on that yourself. Yes, Tell us a little bit about that. So I'm originally from Canada, and I came down to Washington, D.C. for my master's program. And doing that move by yourself can be really challenging and nerve wracking at times. And the only person that I knew in DC was actually a student that I did model United Nations with at a conference. We did not attend the same university. We just happened to be in the same community, uh, committee and our country sat beside each other for three days. So we became pretty good friends at the end of it. And just keeping in touch with those people has not only can not only help at a personal level for moves, but I've heard of many different friends, and I have many different friends of colleagues who have received an internship or have had a job opportunity because of somebody that they've met who has participated in Model UN. We're kind of like our own alumni group. Um, being in Model UN, is it's a lot of work to prepare, and it's a really rewarding re experience. So a lot of students who do it stick together. That's fantastic. 10 seconds where you see like, expansion in the Model UN over the next 5, 10, 15 years, and we got about 10 seconds. More students are going to just start participating. It. It's really important um, to help with the interconnectedness of the world and the communication for all these issues. Fantastic. Megan Penn, the Director of Global Education. United Nations Association, National Capital Area, as we create the Emerald Planet.